that we have a father to run to. Even when we may not have our father here on earth, we always have our father in heaven. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing that we can always cry out to him. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407-490-4019. Text all prayer requests to 407-490-4019. We love to pray for you. There's power in prayer. And the word says, with two or more gather in his name, that he is in the midst of us. So I know that he hears our prayers. He is a loving father. He's a faithful father. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to declare Psalm 91. So if you can go to Psalm 91, we're going to declare that with power and boldness. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Psalm 91 and let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. And surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. So Pastor Warren, please come up. Amen. See, I ran up here to give today, Lord. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't want to run when I got up out of bed this morning, but there's something about when we get to give to God in any area of that he calls us to do, I'm running. I'll be the first in line, I'm going to tell you that. And I'm, I'm praying for you all to get that revelation into your life today. Whatever God's called you to do, run to it. Be the first to be on the line. Don't be in the back, sitting in the back pew, waiting for somebody to do it for you. So if you're giving today, I just want to thank you. We're going to get, pre prepare our hearts. It's always a hard issue. If your heart's not right, you're not going to do whatever God's calling you to do in any area of your life. So let's prepare our hearts to give of our tithes and offerings. If you're giving online, covenantfusion.com, go to the Give button. And thank you in advance for everybody who does prepare to give. You know, it's something about those type of people that I just want to flock and gravitate and be around because the person that wants to be running to the battle is the person I want fighting with me in the battle. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited today. If, if you're struggling in your finances, I can just, I can just honestly tell you it's, it's a seed time and harvesting. It, whatever you're going to sow in, you're going to reap. If you're not sowing into God's kingdom, you have no right to complain about your finances. If you're not sowing love into the people that you say you love, don't complain when they don't love you back. If you're not sowing friendship into your, for your friends, don't complain when they're not a good friend to you. You know, you've got to be the number one in every area of your life. You know, if it's friendship, be a better friend. If it's love, be a better lover. If it's giving, be a better giver. Be the first to give. Be the first to sow. And you'll be guaranteed the first to reap. Amen? Amen. So whatever's holding you back, I rebuke it right now in every area that you will walk out of this place. You'll walk out of this service today that God will speak to you about being first in all areas of your life. Amen. So I'm going to pray as we get ready to give. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've gave me the ability to have the, the, the right heart, Lord, that you came into my life through gr grace and mercy. Father, I pray that you'll come into people's life and that you will transfer our hearts. You'll renew our minds to understand it's all about taking our eyes off ourselves and giving first to your kingdom. So we can reach people, Lord. But you said to take our eyes off ourselves and to be a friend. We'll be a friend. To be a lover, a better lover, we'll be a lover. To be a, a good dad, a good mom. We'll run first into the battles in all areas of our lives, Lord. As we sow our finances, Lord, today, Lord. 
Your word will not come back void. You said you will open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing we can't contain. I believe it right now that that window is opening and the flow is coming down. The conduit, the channel that you have set up between heaven and earth, that we will reach out and we will be connected to it today like never before. That we will be in the blessing and not in the curse. That we will be the head and not the tail. We will be the beginning and not the end. We will be blessed to be a blessing because your word said that it will happen. We declare it right now that our finances are overflowing, that our jobs are going up. We were getting promotions, that our businesses are being promoted, that we will have things that we didn't have because we're putting you first. We're running to the front line of the battle in our finances, Lord, because when we sow into your kingdom, your word will be activated. It will not come back void and we will be successful. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. thank you. God bless you. And again, I'm, I'm excited that you're going to walk out of here a changed person today because you've just learned that you need to be first. Stop being second. Stop being third. God wants you to be first in his kingdom and your family and your friends and the people around you are counting on you. God bless you. Pastor Shree is coming to give the message. All right. God is good. Amen. He's doing great things in our life and he's, you know, I always have to figure out how to get this thing. <laughs> but anyway, we live and we learn, right? All right. So um, before we get into the service or the message, I just want to share a few things. Uh, firstly, um, Liz, stay for a minute, please. Uh, um, firstly, we just want to, you know, as Pastor was uh, mentioning a moment ago, we want to honor all the the veterans with our prayer, with our support, with uh, everything that we can do to stand with them. Amen? Amen. It's important that we, you know, as the Bible says, uh, there is no greater love than one laying down their life. And we have all these uh, uh, people. I'm, I'm blessed as a, as a pastor of this uh, Covenant Fusion Church that uh, we can, uh, I have so many of these uh, members that's part of our church that have served in different uh, capacities. And uh, today, of course, I, I also miss my my brother Jeremy, he has to go train people, so he's being busy. Uh, but uh, everyone that is here, we just want to thank you. And uh, I just want you to see, even as a thank you from the church, I want you to know this thing as, a, as Covenant Fusion Church, as a thank you from us. We also partner with uh, uh, organizations like uh, uh, Wounded Warrior Project and uh, USO. We send in a a check for them so we can be a blessing for them as well as um, you know the people that are not here we want to be a blessing for them from the church we as a church we sow into these things as well isn't that good God is good right you know we can celebrate that we can celebrate those things you know part of the monies that we uh, uh, get here I want you to know as much as uh, uh, we are into the outreach. We are also into the inreach. Our people has to be taken care of as well. And while we are at it, you know, uh, I just also want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Gail, um, who is always willing to be uh, 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 there for uh, with the creative things that she does. And even last week when uh, Pastor Finney have come, she comes there with a basket of goodies, and I can tell. His face lit up because he never gets that kind of a thing anywhere else. But he got it. He took the basket. Let me be the witness. He took the basket and kept it in his room and he ate at his convenience. But I just want to appreciate you, Gail. And also look at this, the beautiful uh, flowers that she made uh, as a decoration for all the veterans. that are wearing it on them. So, it, you know, I, I don't have that honor. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for doing this, Gail. God bless you. Thank you for that. And um, um, last but not least in this list, I want all of the uh, men and uh, women who have served to stand up. 
so we can um, uh, honor you all. Jonathan? All of you, we just want to uh, bless everyone. I, I, I guess, give me one of those things. I just want to show the people online that this is what they're getting. Isn't this cool? All right, all, all of you come forward so we can uh, go ahead, Jonathan. Give. All right. <laughs> Jonathan, take a picture of them <laughs> before it's all gone. <laughs> Uh, we even have extra things here. Um, if you know of a, uh, someone that have served, just uh, um, take one to bless them as well. But um, let me pray over them first. If you don't mind, stretch forth your hands on them, toward them, so we can um, all, 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 all can bless them, okay? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your blessing upon these men and women that have sacrifice their lives to stand there in the, in, in the heat, Father. And all the others that, that we are connected with, we continue to speak a blessing over them. That they will be comforted, that they will be strengthened as they are in, in the society, Father, building and standing for your values, for your plan. God, I pray that you would continue to uh, uh, protect them, lead them and guide them and provide for them in every aspect of their life. At this hour, we also stand in agreement with your plan for all the people that have served in every unit, my God. The brothers and sisters, we release your blessing upon them. The people that are suffering through, the, through things, Father, that are, that are pulling them away and making them homeless or however it is, Father, we pray for your comfort over them. We pray for your support over them. The people that may have lost limbs, that, that may have lost lives. God, I pray for your comfort for their families right now in the name of Jesus. Your wisdom be falling upon them that they will be lifted up by you, Father. And even these people as they have as they stood their way there, Father, as they are rebuilding themselves, anybody that is out there is lacking. God, I pray that you would supply their needs, my God. And tug on the hearts of the people around that they can stand with with them, that they can support them, Lord. Not hatred, but love, Father. Let that hatred be gone and love be increased. That they can bless them, oh God. Have your way through them. Have your way for them. And I ask nothing but your will to be done in their lives as it is in heaven. And even we lift up all the armed forces right now that are serving here and outside, Father, that they will be supported by you, that they will be protected by you. Your wisdom will reign. All the godless laws be broken. Only godly laws be in, uh, uh, coming in there, Father, that people will enjoy the freedom of your love and your plan and your purpose. May your will be done in our lives, in, in, in the lives of these great men and women, for your glory as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said? Amen. amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Jonathan, come on. Thank you. All right, let's get into the word today. Are we excited about that? <laughs> God is very good. God is very good. Um, the title of my message today is, it's, it's a, um, a, an honoring thing for our uh, uh, heroes. So in, in through that, I, I want to talk a little bit. Uh, the title of my message is, War of uh, war for hundred meters. Now, um, last week I was uh, watching a movie that pretty much what inspired my title. I was watching a movie, and uh, there's a movie it was uh, depicting about uh, something that has happened um, in World War One. Um, it is called uh, Battle of Verdun. Um, 
it's a it's a, you know it's a it's a war you know world war when we, when we think about world war it's not just one war that happened it's accumulation of multiple wars it was happening in different fronts different areas uh, what what all has happened and uh, this one is it, it, I, I felt um, it's important to share this. This was a war between the French and the Germans. The Germans were invading uh, 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 France, and they were fighting there. Uh, and as they uh, were fighting, the war was, uh, it, it was the longest of the World War I. All, all, out of all the wars that have happened, the small wars, that, that accumulate the World War I, this was the longest. Why? Because it took 302 days. The war went on for 302 days. Every single day, facing the enemy, facing the bullets, facing the trauma of death, and facing the, the, the pain of somebody that, that they were laughing with, somebody that, that you were eating with, and now is gone. And uh, that's one of the most... Uh, uh, bloodiest wars as well, because uh, um, if you can guess uh, I I how many people died just in this one war that I'm talking about, is about a million people on both sides. A million of them died in a span of 302 days. And imagine the trauma or the pain that everybody went through there. The 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 pressure of the situation. It oftentimes ends up, what happens is this. They gain 100 meters. That's all they did. So one team gains, either it is France or the Germany, that gains 100, feet, 100 meters, and then the other, other troop comes back and gains that back. So the war went on for 302 days just to gain 100 meters. That's all there is. And they lost a million soldiers. A million of them. So if we just look at the stats of it, that million people were willing to go there representing their nation. Willing to put anything and everything on the line to go there. The problem there in that war, one other thing happens is by next day, 11 o'clock, they signed a treaty. By 11, the war is going to end. That was the treaty. But on the German side, there was a leader or a, or a commander, however, uh, whatever that uh, uh, role was. He makes these people that have given up the arms and everything, they're like, okay, I'm done, I'm getting ready to go home. He makes them go back to the battle. And all of these characters, most of everybody that went back there died. It added to the casualties for no reason. When the head up, when the leaders have made a peace treaty, this one person that is in charge of this command, this troop, he made a, 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 made a decision that, okay, I'm going to send them back. I want you to go back. The weight of a decision is what I am talking about. Life is all about the decisions that we make. What we gain from it and what we are losing from it. All for what? 100 meters? A million people died. And it lasted for 302 bloody days. You know, um, at, that, at that point, you also need to understand and respect the men and women who are willing to go out there. You know, one day we don't, you know, whenever these hurricanes or things like that happen, for a day or two or a few days, we lose power. And when we do that, if we just scream. When is the power coming back? We pray and we pray in tongues. We pray in everything impossible to make sure the power is back. Imagine them having to live through that. 
those kinds of scenarios the friends that they marched with are not there or the or the feet that they marched with are not there with them things that that, that they they went with are not there the the joy that they had before they couldn't even laugh uh, the biggest struggle uh, uh, the what what war does for people is uh, 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 they cannot live with themselves because they are so used or in a way they got addicted to the war outside they forgot the war inside and that is a life principle that we all go through we are so addicted to the war outside that we ignore the war inside we are so used to having the chaos outside we ignore us or we hide ourselves in that war we always want that outside thing happening if the outside thing is not happening you cannot live with you we always have to have that we always have to have something going outside and if that outside thing is not happening your identity is in crisis we struggle what do i have many people um they look for something to be showcased and when you find yourself okay what do i have to showcase here many of us we are looking for that we are always looking for how can i be found what is my identity and we are constantly looking for that identity outside because you ignore the war inside we ignore the war inside we don't want to war wage that war that is inside so we are waging the war outside and trying to build our fortresses or our empires or whatever it is on the outside and then the problem many times is you got to live with it you got to live with your decision can you that's a question that you and me have to ask ourselves can i live with this decision often times you are given the possibility of making a decision that will satisfy you in the now what about it in the big picture that 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 war that i was talking about a million people when i am looking at it from a, from an outsider after after decades of that war when i look at it are you out of your mind for 100 meters you're losing 1 million people 1 million people 1 million families have been destroyed for 100 meters the cost of that one decision the cost of defending your right the cost of defending what is rightfully yours and had it not been done it would have been destroyed now we need to understand the price that we pay the cost that we are paying why are we paying maybe we will only gain an inch or maybe we will keep an inch maybe it is all worth it maybe it is all worth it sometimes we are always looking for that big progress big change to happen but big change doesn't always mean a good change for you the ambition of the world war is to bring the whole world into one order the world war 2 was the same thing one world order and now we face the same thing the one world order maybe not with weapons but with money with power with ideologies it's the same war right now we are in the middle of that world war 3 if you don't understand it this may not be fought with guns and bullets this is being fought with food this is being fought with power this is being fought with political power this is being fought with many other things 
They are dangling these carrots. The food, if you don't get a jab or if you don't do this, you cannot have this. And you may be giving all you are giving is an inch. Maybe that inch could be life and death. So I, I just want us to understand the weight, the, 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 the people that have fought for it. Why did they fight? And think about the Pearl Harbor. Okay, it's a harbor. We have so many other harbors. If everybody thought that way. And that is exactly what everybody is trying to make you think. But the Lord says, what's the big deal? You have 99 sheep. But he goes after that one sheep. What's the big deal? You fed thousands of people. Why are you caring about the crumbs? He tells the disciples, go collect all them crumbs. And they came back with 12 baskets of them. The value of things. The value of your decision. It might look like a crown, but, but that decision has more value. The only person that can understand the value of your decision, the value of your life, the value of what you are doing, is you with your God. It has to be you with your God. You know, we are driven with things these days. The society is all driven with what is coming my way. Then what is going out of me? Jesus was more interested in what left him than what came to him. He was appreciative of that woman who took the, 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 the virtue out of him. I saw this left me. When thousands of people are coming to him, he was more interested in one thing that left him. Think about that. The power of your decision. The power of your decision. What you are going to make. The weight of your decision. There is an incident, there is an incident that took place in the Bible that I believe I, I, I wanted us to study today. That really explains the weight of a decision. I, be, I, I believe. This is one of the fascinating things. Go with me to the Second Samuel 23rd chapter starting at verse 8. Second Samuel 23 starting at verse 8. It's no different. You know many times the wars that happen. A father willing to give up on living with the children so he may provide for them. A mother who is, you know, she knows that mother, you know, I have to breastfeed my child. But you know what? I got to also feed myself to breastfeed her. That's a battle. That's a war. What is mother going to feed her? Feed the baby if she is all she is focused on breastfeeding and not feeding herself. 2 Samuel 23. These are the names of mighty men, starting at verse 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Um, these are Josheb, uh, Bashebeth, and uh, 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 I don't even know, Taki Monite, chief of three heroes. You know, David has a wonderful team around him. He, he built the team. In groups, he creates these different groups and different leaders. Different groups are, are you know, I, 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 this is the same model Jesus follows. If you are in leadership, you don't want 1,001 people. Jesus ran the whole organization, worldwide evangelism, with 12 people. Just 12 people. As a leader, if you, want, if you ever desire to be a leader, it's not about many, it's about the few. You always have to have the mindset, you know, quality should always trump quantity. You always have to have that. If that is not your mindset, your leadership is going to be in tubes. 
You have to understand how to divide and how to create that, that atmosphere where everybody can succeed. But you are not present there. That is part of leadership. If everybody is coming to you, you are not a leader. Let's, let's, let me put it simply that way. If you are the answer, you are not the leader. You cannot be the answer for everything. You will have to distribute. You will have to figure that out. And everybody, we have to understand, even as a church, if we want to build an effective church, it is not about the pastor. It's about the leadership around. How we can break it down. How we can represent this thing. How we can take, take it to the next level. That is what makes us... David didn't go for every war there is, but his people did. Because they were able to carry on that mantle, that leadership that he had, that vision that he had, and he ran, everybody ran. And that's why it's important that we understand who is making the decisions. If you can't trust the decision maker, you will always have hard time. That's why we have hard time in our society, because we can't trust our politicians. Because they are in that place to make decisions. That's why your voting is so important. Electing, who are we electing is so important. If we don't understand that simple uh, logic, you're putting somebody to be an in charge of a decision making. All they are doing is decisions. You're putting them in charge of making a decision and that de decision will have consequences for you. How will you let them make those decisions? You know, I'm here to uh, talk, I think, um, with the elections that have happened, midterm elections that have happened for us. Can I say something about it? <laughs> there are many things that have happened in there, but the, as the elections were going on, there were two things that the Lord have uh, 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 revealed to me, the Spirit of, have come upon and, and revealed this. One of the things, the one main thing that I want to talk about is, this is what the Lord has said. Pennsylvania, you have chosen my wrath. You have chosen my wrath. That is what it has done. And then the follow-up instruction he said was, Georgia, don't do it. So I'm here to encourage every one of us to pray, to speak that word, to speak life over Georgia. If something was to happen to Georgia, remember this thing, it's our neighboring state. As much as we want to be secure, our borders also should be secure. So we have... The, the mission is not about Republican or Democrat. It's about life and death. As a Christian, I'm encouraging you, walk away from the Democrat and Republican. We have to choose life or death. Pennsylvania chose death. It, it was the beacon. That is where the freedom bell was. Today, in these elections, they have chosen that place to be destroyed. They have walked away from that place. I'm not here talking politics. I'm talking the kingdom. And they chose the wrath of God. Where it was, was a safe haven. Believe it or not, in the history, Pennsylvania was the safe haven for the people, for the slaves that were fleeing from the, from the so-called Dixiecrats or the Democrats that were, the, the, that were enslaving people up north. When they were running, Pennsylvania played the role of protecting them. Now it has chosen to kill babies. The same state has chosen the wrath of God. What about New York? What about California? They're already in the list. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what this particular state have chosen right now. This was a choice that was given to them by the Lord himself to choose life. 
but they chose death. And hence, they also chose the wrath of God. You know, I don't go into all those things all the time, but this is what the Lord has laid heavily on my heart. So I have to speak it. So that is what has happened right now. It has chosen death because of the decisions that are coming and that are going to come. Their decision, they only thought a few things, but they didn't think of God. Your decision making always have to put God as the chief cornerstone. My loyalty is to nobody but him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be a blessing into your life. I rather, I will be a curse. Only because I am loyal to God, I am loyal to my wife. Only because I am loyal to God, I am loyal to my children. Only because I am loyal to God, I am loyal to my church. Only because I am loyal to God, I am loyal to this nation. Only because of that. All right. Um, there were three heroes known as Adino as knight. He wielded his spear and went against 800 men who were slain at one time. We talk about Spartans. These are even before Spartans. Right? Next, next to him among the three mighty men was Eliezer, son of Dodo, son of Ahohai. He was with David when they defiled the Philistines, assembled there for battle, and the, uh, uh, and the men of Israel had departed. Eliezer arose, struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. The Lord wrought a great deliverance and victory that day. The men returned after him only to take the spoil. Next to Eliezer was Shammah, son of Agi, the Hararite. The Philistines were gathered at Lehi on a piece of ground full of lentils, and the Israelites fled from Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Now, uh, did you see what is happening with these three people? Great people or the great leaders doesn't happen accidentally. Where everybody was fleeing, they went into it. They stood there. Every, it is easy for you to compromise. Let me, let me be very clear. It is so easy for you to compromise. But you need to choose to fight. If you are not willing to fight, the whole world is always trying to make you compromise. It is always trying to pull you down to say, okay, it's okay. You're always making a decision of comfort. Let me be very clear here. Can I speak my heart? If you are making a choice of comfort, you are ruining your plan. You are ruining your future. The devil is always trying to get you to the green pastures. He is always trying to get you, get you back to Egypt too. That is what the Israelites' biggest struggle was. They were trying to go back to Egypt. In 400 years, they were slaves. Remember, the generation that was walking with Moses was born and brought up in that slavery. That's all they know. They don't know how to survive outside of it. Many people still struggle with that. They don't know how to survive outside of it. Outside of it. I'm here to ask you something. Can you pop your bubbles? The bubbles that you created for yourself. You're expecting God to do that? I'm here to tell you, you got to do it. If you are not willing to sculpt your own sculpture... That is what God does in you. When he is living in you, he is creating the rock becoming a sculpture. And the one that is going to chisel it out is you. With him. The father that lives in you. 
Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. For what? For you to live in your comfort? For you to live in your familiarity? If you, <clears throat> if you can push yourself to the unknown and the unseen, what good are we calling ourselves men and women of faith? There ought to be a challenge. Maybe all you will be gaining is an inch. But that's alright. In those hundred meters. If the French have not worried about those hundred meters. The French would have been annulled. And the three of the thirty chief men. Went down at a harvest time to David. In the cave of Adullam. 13th verse. And a troop of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the stronghold in the horizon of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David was longingly longingly, oh that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem by the gate. The leader of this, this whole army has a longing. He wants some, all he longs for is a cup of water from that particular well. <laughs> it sounds, you know, it, 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 it sounds so selfish and, and, and the simple thing. It was a very simple thing. You know, one of the greatest things that we need to learn from David's life is he's the greatest leader you can come across. Even Jesus himself doesn't mind being called son of David. Think about that position. You know, that position is not easily given to us. You know, everybody wants that position. Everybody wants that identity. Everybody wants that exaltation. But that doesn't come to us easily. What is your warfare? What is your war? You know, you don't get the medals of war. Medals of valor without you participating in a war. Let me see your war wounds. Are you with me here? It's very quiet. It sounds, seems like I'm preaching at a Presbyterian church today. <laughs> May the Presbyterian spirit be cast out in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh. He was longing oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem by the gate. This was surrounded by enemy. Everybody is around. The, the, and the three mighty men broke through the army of Philistines. Army of Philistines. They were walking through that. And drew water out of the well of Bethlehem by the gate. And brought it to David. Wow. It's an amazing event. Amazing thing. Impossible for them. They don't know what is impossible. You want that? I'll bring it for you. I'll get it for you. It was just even a longing. He wasn't telling them. You got to go get it. They just jumped on it. What an amazing faithfulness. Can we jump on Jesus' longing? You're more jumping on your longing than his longing. You know, I lay down the song we sang a minute ago in there. One of the things, I'm laying down my rights. That was part of the song. I'm lay, laying down my rights. You have your rights. Can you lay them down for God? Can you lay them down for Jesus? You have your will to choose. You have the right to choose. Can you lay it down to him saying, not my will, but your will, God? Not my plan, but your plan. You got plans. You got great, great plans. You got great ideas. Can you lay them down? Can you lay them down saying, God, I'm here to do your will. Not my will. Not my will, but your will. You know, God is not looking for talented people. You know that? 
God is looking for loyal people who can be loyal to him. No matter where you might be going, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you might be going, if God was to call you, you know, as a kid, my father used to teach, tell me something. He was, he's, you know, he was mean. I used to think that way. But <laughs> he was building me for a future. Any child will think that, right? My father is a mean guy. <laughs> but I, I used to think of him as a mean guy because he used to make me recite multiplication tables. In such a way that he would tell me, if I wake you up in the sleep, you best be answering, what is 6 times 7? What is 13 times 5? If I ask you in the middle of the sleep, you best tell me that. It was a hard task, but he tested me. I played myself away in, in, during the daytime because I can, I'm good at memory. I could do these kinds of things, but this is something you have to be built in. In the night time when he wakes up and asks me, what is that 14 times 7? I'm like, oh, okay, why are you waking me up for this? But in a similar way, the Lord prepares us not for today, but for tomorrow. There is a future that is awaiting us. Today you are looking at certain things only as a today's problem. As today's solution. No, 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 you have to think about tomorrow. What is the consequence of my decision? Can I live with this decision? Now David has been put in a very tough spot. These three people went and bought the water for him. And they're, 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 they're willing to give everything, give their life. Those three people were willing to die for David. For a cup of water. For a cup of water. Are you compromising from God's will for a cup of water? What's the difference between you and Esau who sold his birthright for a morsel of meal? What are we laying down? Let me be very honest here. We are quick to lay down Jesus before we are quick to laying down ourselves. We will lay down Jesus before we lay down anything else. As soon as the things get tough, we're like, okay, let me find my way out. No. You are being given the charge. You have been given that base. You have been given those hundred meters. Cover it. Cover it while you die. If it may. Amen. The people these days, they fought for the rights of this land. These people fought for it in and out. They sacrifice their life. What are you doing for those rights that they fought for? The right to choose, right to be able to elect whomever you want has been given by those people. They fought for it. Not only that, Jesus fought for it on the cross. This so-called democracy doesn't exist if God, Jesus didn't go to the cross. Your choice didn't mean anything if Jesus wasn't the reason. Amen. We came up from that society. We are a byproduct of that society where we didn't care for someone else's choice. Whoever has the strength, they took it. It doesn't matter where you're from, whether you are from India or whether you are from Europe. It didn't matter. That's what we grew up with. That is the product of our society. That is how we, we live. Somebody enslaved somebody else. Though we are trying to pinpoint at somebody these days. We just want a scapegoat, not the responsibility. It's always someone else's fault. What about you when it has come to lay down your life, your will for his will. What did you do with that? Isn't that a war? <laughs> then he says here, <clears throat> he has to go through this. They brought the water. But look at this. And the three mighty men broke through the army of Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem by the gate and brought it to David. But he wouldn't drink it. 
Even though he had the longing for it, when it is at his hands, this overwhelming conviction have come upon him. No God, I can't do this. But poured it out to the Lord. He poured it out to the Lord. Because he understood only he can have such a loyalty. He couldn't live with the decision of drinking it. Had he, had he done that, he had to live with it all his life. The rest of his life, I jeopardized my three main people for a cup of water. Now, the society that we live in, it doesn't matter how many peoples get lost. You got to go where you go. And above everything, you are more interested in doing what you want rather than doing what Jesus has ordained for you. It's easier for you to pick up those things. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good example for it. Before I started this church, I was given a wonderful offer to go pastor in Iowa for, with a church of 100 plus people. And I will be paid every month with a standard pay and I have a housing. And I chose this. I chose this. Now the reason is I have to live with the decision. I have to live with it. Today it might look good. It is allowing me to excel. I am a pastor. I am a hundred people. I have this. I can grow this church. On the other side God is saying I need you here. It's not about the prospect. It's not about the prospects, never about the prospects. If you really want to be the war hero that God has called you to be, where the Bible says you are more than conquerors, you got to choose something when nobody else is choosing. Those three people did not become those heroes without them choosing the war when everybody is leaving the post. Everybody ran from their ground, but they chose, you know what, I'm going to stay here. 800 people? One person against 800 people. 800 odds that are against you, you still can win. Glory be to God in heaven. One can send thousand to flight, two can send. That is what church is all about. We fight against those odds. That is why we come in agreement. That is why we have been given the power to agree and have that one accord where we can change the dimensions, the directions, the proposals, whatever it may be. We can change that from being impossible to possible. Have you fought the fight of faith? Are you just giving in to the fight of your flesh? He poured it out. Jesus gives it back. David gives it back as a drink offering back to the Lord. No, Lord, I can't have this. This is yours. Only you can have this. Can you be that one person that can say, only you can have authority over me, God. Not even me. I know I can do this thing. I can have this. But no, I want you. You know, I, I got to make a point. My brother there, uh, P P Pastor Warren, he, he, you know, he is in the, uh, uh, in the middle of trying to buy himself a truck. It's easy for him to buy any truck he wants. But what do you want me to have, Lord? It's not about the credit score. It's not about the affordability. It's not about any of those things. What do you want me to have, Lord? It's a simple st stinking truck. It's a metal, a hunk of metal. But still, we have to wrestle with God. If we can prioritize Him, whoever, who is faithful in the little, you'll never be scaling yourself to the next level if you can't be faithful in the little. We got to wrestle with each other. And He said, 17th verse, and He said, Be it far from me, O Lord. To drink this. Is it not the same as the blood of men who went and risked their lives? He had a wonderful revelation. If I drink this cup, this is no different than drinking their blood. 
every decision that we make. If I make this decision, there is, is no different than saying no to the Lord. These things did these three mighty men. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Can you wage a war for your peace? We fight so much for our promotion. What about your peace? What about the peace within? He got to live with you. When there was storm, Jesus didn't command the storm. He says, peace, be still. It adjusted everything. It adjusted everything. The storm calmed down. The people calmed down. The provisions came. The ministry went on. The faith built. Everything else added to it. When one thing that he fought for was peace. We are so caught up in the storms that we are making decisions in accordance to the storm. But when God says, let the peace be your guide. Can you fight for that peace? Can that be your hundred meters war? Can that be your hundred meters war? My brothers and sisters, I'm trying to encourage all of us to make the decisions that matter. Not the decisions that benefit you. The decisions that matter. That would be the tribute that we can give to the one man who didn't say no to the cross. He could have. He has every right. I'm going to go back. Losers, you die, to, you die and go to hell. My place is secure in heaven. I'm going to stay there. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, Father. Not my will. But your will, that alone brings me to tears. What if he chose his own will? What if he said, no oh Lord, this is too much for me. This cross is too much for me, I can't bear it. Let me walk away from it. There is no one to complain. Because nobody put him to the task but himself. Still, he chose me. He chose my life. That one, the 99 that was with him, he didn't bother. That one that was lost, he chose me. If he was that particular about me and for me, how much more particular I should be about him? How much more I should be thinking about him in every decision that I make? I don't care, God. I, I, I don't care for the promised land. If you are not going there, I'm not going there. I don't care for this money increase, Father. Can, if you are not going there, I'm not going there. We live in a world of comfort and convenience. Can I say something? Those are demonic. When they are leading us. God is big. God is big about giving us the riches. God is so big. He wants us to have everything to enjoy. Life is supposed to be enjoyful. I'm not looking for the comfort of the couch when I have my life comfortable. Are you all with me here? When you can live with you, you don't have to find a couch to find that comfort. Whether you sleep on a lazy boy or on a concrete floor, it's still sleeping the same because you got the peace. I want to read that same verse from the Amplified Bible. It reads beautifully. Peace I leave with you. My own peace. His own peace. Not your peace. His own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives to I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Look at this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. That's a war. That is the war that Jesus is commissioning us. Stop allowing, look at this. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. 
That's the 100 meter war. That 100 meter war. It's easy for me to tip you out because I can just say, okay, you're not getting a paycheck. You're like immediately I'm at my knees. Whatever you do, I will do it. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do it. Because I can't stand. I, 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 I'm ready. I, I need that paycheck. So he goes on. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Do not permit yourself to be fearful. If somebody is trying to tell you fear is okay, I'm here to tell you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You have the power to say no to fear. Come on, church. I have the power to say no to fear. Come on. I have the power to say no to fear. You cannot be dictated by fear. You should not be making decisions in fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Glory be to God in heaven. What am I going to eat? Let God take care of that. When you can see things through him, everything will come line up for you. Even the crows will make a provision for you if it has to be. Everything has been commissioned to provide for you, protect you. Even the water doesn't have a command to sink you in. It has the command to protect you, to let you go. We are so worried about the fish. But the fish has been commissioned to spit you out. We are so worried about this life. The life has been commissioned to spit you out. Because he has a better need for us. He has a better need for us. Not the life. Oh life decisions. No. Make Jesus decisions. Make Jesus decisions. It all works out. It all works out. If we can make the choices. In accordance to that. Lose if you have to. For you are gaining in him. Do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated. And cowardly and unsettled. Come on church. How many of we are living a settled life? A compromised life? Can I charge you up today? Can, you get you a, can I get you to a point where you can think, I have more from God, I have more to give to God. I have, you have more to give to God. Don't forget that. What can God do to you? Forget about that. What can you do to God? What can you give to Jesus today? You know you have more to offer to him than you have. You have refrained from offering yourself. Because you put it to yourself. When God himself has put it for himself. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Do not neglect the hundred meters. Oh, what's the big deal? That's the big deal. That's the big deal. Peace, fight for it. Fight for the peace. We fight for paychecks. We fight for popularity. We fight for everything that is out there. We fight for our identity. Can you fight for peace? When you can fight for your peace, your identity is guaranteed in it. Your promotion is guaranteed in it because everybody is looking for somebody who can be stable in the storm, not somebody who throws himself, oh Lord, I don't know what is happening here. Everybody is scared of everything that is happening. You may not have the solution, but you can act like one. Because the one who has the solution is living in you. The one who has the answer is living in you. You have the mind of Christ. For what? For you to be scared? For you to live in fear? For you to make decisions out of fear? Can you be somebody who walks into it saying, I got this? Come on church, I got this. Come on, I got this. That is who we are. We don't live in the limbo, we live in the forefront. Because we are not going to be driven by fear. We are not unsettled, as a matter of fact, we are the settled. 
We are the promise keepers. We are the promise inheritors. We have everything in Christ Jesus. He have called us and ordained us to be his sons and daughters. What else do you want? He has ordained us to be his kings and queens. That's why he exalted himself saying, I am the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you are not busy being the king that he has called you to be, what else are you doing? Are you being a slave? He's not looking for slave ownership. He's looking for kings. Many of us have become slaves to the pocketbook. Many of us have be become slaves to the debt. Every system that is out there is trying to enslave you. That's why organizations like, like World Economic Forum can succeed. Because our mindset is slavery, not kingship. If you can think like a king, you can live like a king. When you are living like a king, who are you to tell me? This is my domain. If I want it, I will have it. If I don't want it, no. Not even a thank you. No. Get your butt off my face. We have to learn how to live uh, like the kings. With authority. You have been given the power to create. Why are we enslaving ourselves to all these things? What do you want? Create it. Create what you want. That is the ability that God has given. Oh, there is, it's not possible. Why are you praising God saying he will make a way where there is no way? If you can't see through the possibilities. Impossible becoming possible. That ought to be our mission in it. Amen. I'm challenging every one of us. Let us pick up on this war. Pick up on this war. Maybe we are taking too much on us when it belongs to him. It belongs to you, Lord. Let me pour this drink offering to you. It is you who saved my life. It is you who paid for my redemption on the cross. It is you who have blessed me with these gifts. It is you who have given me the family. It is you, it is you, it is you, Lord. It is you, for you, I will pour this drink offering. I'm sorry that I'm keeping this for me. I try to keep it for me. No God, not my will, but your will. Not my plan, but your plan, Father. Not my ego. How many of y'all are stuck in that ego circle? Our ego is getting the best of us than the will of God. Women of God, I'm telling you, please, let the Lord convict you. Don't let your ego get in between. You think men have ego. Let me tell you very clear. Women have a lot more. But they tell it nicely. That's all. That's all. Many times I know, you know, when I'm ministering to people and I'm like, say, oh, come to church or whatnot. The man, man in the house gets super excited. Oh, I'm coming. That's the church. And I look at the wife, and her reaction tells me, no, he's not happening. It's not happening. Because the woman didn't connect with me. I've seen so many of them like that. But anyway, the outside war may end. These are a few statements I want to end with. The outside war may, may end, but the inside war is never leaving you. You may be able to get your car, but inside identity problem, that's not leaving you. Make decisions that are long term, not just instant gratification. Maybe you could be satisfying your own ego, that doesn't mean a thing. Now the ultimate question, can you live with your decision? David couldn't live with his decision. What a crazy thing that, that, draw, that drew me up to a place where I asked God, God put me in a place where I don't see the consequences and then say, God, I wish. Can I make the decision in the time of making the decision? Because our life should never have regrets. 
never should we have regrets you know second chances are hard to come by as a matter of fact the time that we are living in mm, let me tell you very clear second chances are very slim because of the coming of the Lord the time is too short we can't be messing up with things and then say oh Lord get me back no the door is gone you gotta live with this decision even in my life, I'm fa I live with that. But can you live with your decision? It is very important what you commit to as it brings your long-term war. It's very important that you learn what are you committing to. Because that is what triggers your long-term war. Don't use your outside war as a way out to dealing with your inner war. Be still and know that I am the Lord. How are you going to know that if you are always running around? It's hard for me to tell somebody, can you shut up and sit down? Because we are too busy, too occupied with everything and anything. But what matters the most? The war upon us is easier to deal with when you learn to win the war within you. Amen. That is your, your, your capability. The war upon us. You are always worried about all the things that are coming upon us. If you learn how to win the war within you, those things matter nothing. Because you know you are your biggest obstacle. If we can win you over, you got it. What can you do? And David was dealing with the lion and the bear in the gar somewhere where nobody was seeing because he was warring inside. There, there is no exposure. There is nothing. And now the time have come to take down Goliath. He's like, okay, I, I, your answer comes, I Philistine. I got you. He made him a joke. Even Goliath was saying, Are you, you think I'm a dog? David was like, exactly. Exactly, dude. That's why I came with a rock. <laughs> he knew how to kill a bear and a lion. You know, I, I put you in the same category. I'm going to bring you down. You're not the superhero that the world is trying to tell you. Everybody is trying to depict to you that you are the superhero. You are the giant. I'm here to tell you, you know what? You just fall in the line with the same thing that I have hum humiliated. And he did it. Amen. So I'm encouraging everyone, let us pick up on this war of 100 meters. Most of it is with your decisions. Can you make a decision to fight for your peace, not for your prosperity? Not for your benefit, but for Him. God, I want to do your will. I may be suffering here, but I will do your will. I don't care. The time has come upon us that we choose suffering. What am I saying? You know, you might think, oh, what are you trying? The Bible talks about prosperity. Yes. I am with you on that. I pray for you on that. But the pathway to it is through this. Nobody has fully, fully uh, 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 enjoyed the, the, the prosperity of God. To the full extent. Maybe you making a six figure or seven figure, you think it's prosperity. No. Nothing in comparison to what God has ordained for you. In every aspect of your life. Seven figure will, might, might look like a joke. If we can tap into the prosperity of God. That is what I am praying for. That is what I am believing for. That you may not lack any good thing. That you may not lack any good thing. That is my prayer every day upon y'all. That you may not lack any good thing. That you may not lack any good thing. Why are, you Why are you struggling for small things when God has big plans and a big agenda? Let us choose his will. In the moment it might look like a sacrifice, but choose it. Because you're choosing life. I'm praying that God will continue to bless you in this plan. 
Make the decisions lining up with him. Not your plan. You know, if you are willing to scratch it all off, he's willing to rebuild all of it. The many times I have to do that, I continue to do that. Let me say, God, I'm scratching it off. All off. Now tell me what you want. I'll do anything you want. I know I took longer, but I'm here to encourage everyone. Let us make those decisions that make value. Not gratification. Bring value. Be an investor of your life. If you truly want to invest, invest and have a return out of your investment, do that. I was coming across a small thing today. The other day, I'm, I'm ending here. Well, there was this guy that was that was talking, somebody comes to me and gives me a house that is completely paid off in, 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 uh, 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 and it, it's worth like somewhere around 300 to 400K. He gave them that money to me uh, uh, and somebody asked, what would you do with that? I will sell that house. And immediately go invest and buy me a 1.5 billion, billion dollar house. Because I'm going to build my equity so much that by the time the written time comes, I'll have more to offer to my family than that $400. Your life is worth more than that compromise of $400,000. May the Lord bless you and enrich you for His will. You got something out of this? Amen. Let's stand and finish our service with a confession. Our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. God bless you. We are filled for his glory. Amen. I missed out. Thank you for correcting. All right.